Uh, you know the rules. You gotta be 45 to draw it down, Larry. Yeah, okay, all right, sure, but maybe I can get a letter from the league saying what I'm worth. I could take that down to the bank, borrow against it. Hell, I can go into business. Well, there's a meeting in Montreal next week. I'll see what I can do. That's great, Daddy. That's great. That's all I needed to hear. The NHL pension plan is the best in professional sport. Well, then how come I can't get a straight answer? Look, we got a guy who needs his money. So how do we get it to him? Mr. Lindsay, as I have already explained, from an actuarial viewpoint, it would seriously jeopardize the plan by setting such a precedent. How about if he borrows against it? Could he do that? No. So until he's 45, he's shit out of luck. Crudely put, but accurate. Now, if you'll all turn to page one. Well, you know, uh, Doug and I have been talking, and we don't know why the players can't run this thing ourselves. But it's our pension, and he won't even tell us how much money's in it. You'd bankrupt it in a year if you were in charge. It's a pain in the butt for us, Lindsay, but we do it for your own good. Hey. Hell, we don't even charge you for our time and expertise. You should be damn grateful. Come on, let's move on. Certainly. Uh, now, if you'll all turn to page 166 of my brief marked fiduciary obligations of governors. There you go, sir. I got the world on a string sitting on a Ted. Oh. My, my friend, John. Sure. Good to see you. Oh, Eddie. <laughs> It's gotta go. I'll tell you the truth, Larry, it didn't go so far. What do you say? He said, you ruin the plan if you let guys in your situation take their money out early. <laughs> ruin it? How? Hey, the truth, Larry, I'm not even sure myself. I'm not gonna lie to you, Daddy. I'm hurting. I'm living in my car. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't have as many friends in this town as I thought. Mm. I don't want your charity. I want my money. I gave him my best shot, all right? I'm sorry. You <laughs> sorry? <laughs> sure. You don't give a shit. You got a job. All right, sit down. You're worse than Campbell. Well, I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that one. Yeah, sure, why not, huh? You're good at it. Pretending you're gonna help a guy, then you let the league snow you. <laughs> you know why, Teddy boy? Off the ice, you don't scare anybody. Larry! Larry! Son and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, before we enjoy this bountiful meal, allow me to introduce our very special head table guests. Immediately to my right, he has pitched three no hitters in his illustrious career from the Cleveland Indians. You know him as Fireball and Bob Feller. Next to him, a man I am proud to say is no stranger to us here at St. Francis. He has won the Stanley Cup four times. He has just been named an all-star on left wing, a record 10 consecutive times from our very own Detroit Red Wings, terrible Ted Lindsay. And next, also from the wings, also the winner of four Stanley Cups, he is the big Buick on the right side of the production line. And watch those elbows. Gordy Howe. Thank you, sir. There you go. Thank you, sir. Jim? Bobby, sir. Oh, it's just darn frustrating. Every second question I ask comes back. Don't worry, Teddy. It's the best pension in all of sports. Here you go, Mark. I mean, what's your name? Trevor. Trevor. How did you guys find out about your pension? That's what I want to know. We hired a lawyer to kick the owner's butts. What did you, did you get any results? Had a boy. Always keep your fingers on the seams, eh? Bob. You want to ask him? What? He's right over there. Mr. Mount, oh. I must be up. Milt. Milt, this is Ted Lindsay. Hi, Ted. Milton Mount. Nice to meet you. You think the ball players are a bunch of cotton pickers? <laughs> Wait till you hear this.
How can you stand there and say you're going to pay me the same oh, as last year? Come on, Jack. <laughs> no, 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 no. There ought to be an annual raise. No, well, I'm paying you guys <laughs> 20000 a year. You know oh, that. The cards are a free on. promotion. You ought to be paying me. No, Lindsay. Oh. Where the hell's Lindsay? He, he said he had to go visit his sister, Mr. Adams. He told you that? What the hell did he tell me? He knows about this promotion. And he knows we gotta be in Montreal tomorrow for the All-Star Game. We gotta be on a train tonight. He, he said he'd meet you for the game in Montreal. Oh, he did, did he? Hey, Gordon, come on over. Come on. Hey, Gordy, come on. Don't forget your bubble gum here. <laughs> Thank you, sir. All right. A union? Forget no, it. No, nothing will change until you organize. We're not truck drivers, Milt. We're not coal miners. Yes. We are hockey players. We're not the kind of guys that unions are for. Come on. All right. So how much do you make in a year, Mr. Lindsay? I'll be making twelve thousand dollars this season. After eleven years, you make twelve thousand dollars. A rookie in baseball gets seven. Oh, come on, that's baseball. All right. What if I could prove to you that NHL hockey is the most lucrative sport in North America? The owners tell us they never make any money. I have no reason not to believe. The owners them. are lying. They've been lying to you for years. These are from the Kefauver Commission investigation into organized crime. I have a few friends in the Justice Department. Organized crime? What in hockey? Mostly boxing. But boxing and hockey are tied together in the States by Jimmy Norris. Forget Canada. Canada's easy. Smythe, he owns the Leafs, owns the arena. Same is true in Montreal. Senator Molson, he owns the team, he owns the rink. But Jimmy Norris. He owns or he effectively controls all four American teams. Chicago, New York, Boston, Detroit. Jimmy Norris is the NHL. His brother Bruce here, he doesn't really run the Red Wings. He's a figurehead. Oh, oh, wait, now I know there's a rule that says you can't own more than one team. I know that. Yeah, there's a rule against bank robbery, too. Now, you see the fella standing beside Jimmy? That's Frankie Cabo. This is the button man who killed Bugsy Siegel. Oh, so you're telling me Jimmy Norris is a mobster? I'm saying that he hangs around with mobsters. In boxing, they all do. Ted. These men are powerful, and they are vicious, and you need the protection of labor law. OK. OK. I admit that we're being screwed. And I know that we need to do something, but the players are not going to buy a union. Well, then I know these they're guys, Mel. They're not going to buy it. Hell, I won't buy a goddamn they... union. The best we can do, and I mean this, the very best we could do is maybe some kind of an association. No, no, this is not going to work. We do this my way, Mel, or we just don't do it. Okay. Okay. You know, Ted, in America, we freed the slaves a hundred years ago. But then again, they wanted to be free. Hey, Jimmy, I gotta talk to you. Get lost, Lindsay. I gotta skate with you. I don't gotta talk to you. Oh, no, I gotta talk to you. Hey, you wanna dance? I don't give a goddamn if it is the All-Star game. No, Let's I gotta go. tell you something. Gon Smythe is stealing from you. He's taking food right out of your kids' mouths. Oh, what are you talking about, you stupid turd? He's stealing from you, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Gus, you're looking good. Just and a couple of guys are getting together later on after the game. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing your 1956 NHL All-Stars. Mesdames et messieurs, nous sommes heureux de vous présenter le match des étoiles de la Ligue nationale de hockey pour la saison 55-56. From the Toronto Maple Leafs, George Armstrong. The Maple Leafs of Toronto. Yeah, right after the game. Lindsay! I'm fine, you 50 bucks, wise ass. How do you come off making arrangements to get here on your own? Hey, I'm here, ain't I? Well, next time you ask me. Now, don't embarrass me out there. Lindsay ain't coming. Who set us up? 
He's probably laughing his guts out somewhere right now. Hey, Jimmy. I'm going back to the hotel. Just give him two minutes, okay? Or even half. Sit down. Come on, have some French fries. You're a growing boy, boy. Come on. I'm gonna give you an extra five bucks to you know, make sure you didn't see all of us guys here together, okay? Mon pauvre monsieur, je comprends pas l'anglais, moi. Mon père. Very sweet. Yeah, well, like I said, I don't understand the English. I didn't see you guys. Look who's here. Hey, Ted, what do you think we got online? Wait, we gotta read the sign sheet. Sorry, I'm sorry, I had, I had a ditch at it. All right. all right, Ted, what's all this about guys stealing from us? Yeah. We're gonna get to that, all right? We're gonna get to that. Look, I appreciate you, you boys coming out. I know we're not exactly natural-born allies. Not that right. Boys, this is Milton Mount. He's a labor lawyer from New York City. He's got a few things to say to us. Gentlemen, Ted has asked me on your behalf to look into the uh, business side of the game, and based on what I have found, I think it is time that we question some of the myths of hockey. Number one. Why don't, why don't we come together and send a little bit of stuff? Let's All get right, these tables up. Look alive, will you, Gus? <laughs> Number one, the first myth. There's no money in hockey. The owners, they're barely scraping by. That's right. That's bullshit. Gentlemen, the New York Yankees is the most popular sports team in the biggest city in the world, and they don't make half what the Detroit Red Wings do. <laughs> Number two, Jimmy. Jimmy Thompson, please come in. Milton, up. nice to meet you. Have a seat. The NHL owners are in it for the love of the game. For them, it's, uh, it's like a hobby. Bullshit. Those men own the rinks, and they suck profits out of the teams, and they hide them in the building's books. Three, the NHL can only support six fully professional teams. Bullshit. The NHL is a private club, and the owners keep it that way because they don't want to piece out the gold mine for the NHL pension plan is the best in professional sport. Bullshit. Jesus, what have you found out about the pension plan? Nothing. Dick. Zero. And I'm telling you, when you sniff around a pile of money and the other side clams up, they are hiding something. He's got a point there. Do with a beer. Hmm? Hey, Jimmy, take care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Take Harvey's. Get him a chair. Here you go, Milt. Thanks, Jimmy. The owners are making a lot of dough. Are you fellas? Now, I'm, I'm sure that you've all counted the seats in your rink. So, Jim, how many in the Maple Leaf Gardens? Fourteen thousand. Times how much a seat on average? Four bucks. Times how many home games, including exhibition and playoffs? Forty. Say. 40. 40. 40 times 4 is 160. 160 times 14,000 is 1.4. You add concessions and you add other sources of revenue, and that's about $5 million. Jimmy Thompson, you deserve a fair share of that. What can we do? <laughs> well, I've already recommended to Ted that you, uh, you organize a union. No. Uh, no, no union. I know. No. He made it clear to me that union is a, a dirty word to hockey players. Damn straight. So what the hell are we doing here? Boys, welcome to the first meeting of the NHL Players Association. Players. Yeah. yeah. I like that. That's Association. Yeah. Lindsay, 50 What are you talking about? Well, you want to hear about it? Let's clear yeah. this table off. Back in, though. Yeah? I thought I heard someone talking. You woke me up for that? Well, what's the matter, Lassie? You lonely? You go to sleep. I guess we're still in Pee Wee. <laughs> we must be. Why else can't we see our own contracts? Why else can't we see the books for the pension fund? You know the rules. Not allowed to talk to the press. 
You're not allowed to talk money. You're not allowed to talk to the other hundred grunts who are part of this league. And you sure as hell not allowed to talk back. That sounds like kids to me. I don't know about this association stuff, fellas. I mean, do we really need this? Ah, oh, come on, Gordy. Don't be so damn stupid. Teddy. Shh, Red. Teddy, you've been talking all night. What's on your mind, Gordon? Well, I figure we got it pretty good. I mean, I've had real jobs and so will all of you. But this, this is playing hockey. It's fun. It pays good and heck, it's only six months work. Why rock the boat? I know you guys are... You're the cheapest bunch of sons of bitches on God's green earth. And empty up your hundred bucks and let's get this thing started. Thanks, Red. Believe me, you're not gonna regret it. We got one clean shot at forming this association and standing up like men. Now, for Christ's sake, let's take it. It's that easy. Well, what's a hundred bucks? The fridge can wait. Mm. I'm in. Thanks, Marty. Mm -hmm. Hundred bucks, boys. Hundred bucks. One less trip to the salon for your wife this month. Thanks, Red. All right, who can lend me 15 bucks? <laughs> Glenn, for you, it's 85. <laughs> Thanks, Tony. You owe me 15 bucks. <laughs> are on their way up. Who would be elected president? Well, well Teddy, you gotta be president. It's gotta be yeah, Teddy, yeah. you do it. You gotta say. Why me? Well, because you're the head shit to serve us. Why? <laughs> hey, boy. <laughs> huh? Well, what do I say? Out of 120 players in the league, 119 have joined the Players Association. We've each contributed $100 to pursue a common goal, improving the game of hockey. We want to discuss getting some reasonable benefits, the same reasonable benefits that most other professional athletes already have. Among them are moving expenses, a dental plan, minimum contracts for rookies, and a pension plan that's open to review by the players. Now, I've fought every man at this table, and uh, we've uh, put our differences aside to better the game by helping the players. Any questions? Yeah, what are the owners going to say? Kenny, is this union prepared to strike? This is not a union. It's not a union. We're not talking about striking. We just want regular meetings. Yeah, so you can, so you can run these commie tactics behind the owners' backs? That's not even a question. What do you got behind? Perhaps I can answer that. Every professional sport has an association. And by any yardstick, these are reasonable requests. So we expect 
a reasonable response. 35 years. 35 years that put into this team. I fight to get you guys decent salaries. I put every one of you before my health and before my family. I sweat blood for you guys. I make you into goddamn heroes. And you betray me. You sneak around and you, and, and you stab me in the back. I thought you were family. You're a bunch of gutless wonders. You make me want to puke, but you, you're not even worth the vomit. Are you for this? Are you? Well, take that damn thing out of your mouth! Now answer me, are you for this? Are you? Oh. Glenn. Are you for this? Red, what about you? Are, you? are you for this, Red? Hey, big fella, I know that you're not for this. Time will take care of you, my friend. Time will take care of you. The end of the great game of hockey. That's what we're facing today. A small group of greedy players has been led astray by external agitators who are not cognizant of the fragility of Canada's national sport. For hockey is not about money. Hockey is about dreams. The dreams of small boys on frozen ponds and backyard rinks all across Canada. I am grateful for the understanding and the vigilance. That's a nice speech, of our Clarence. Own. So, how are we really going to respond to this? Hockey players don't have the fortitude to see this through. My advice is to ignore the whole thing. In Montreal, our business is... Oh, we have got to wait for Jimmy. Your brother's opinion is not the only one that counts. With all respect, Mr. Smythe, doing nothing is an option. Our businesses have successfully worked with unions in Montreal for decades. When one has a monopoly, they can make only limited gains. I'm not going to let some jew coming lawyer from New York talk my players into joining a jew coming union that I have to pay to support. I built my rink from the ground up during the Depression. Those ungrateful bastards will tell me how to run it over my dead body. I'm going to smash them. Very eloquent, Connie. And for once, we agree. But let's not go off half-cocked and draw attention to our difficulties. I've already got the feds crawling all over boxing. I don't need them on hockey, too. Quick and quiet, we'll go after the ringleaders, demoralize them. We'll cut off the head of this association and the body will die. We'll start with Lindsay. Jimmy, he's my favorite player. Well, serves you right for letting him get too big for his britches. You'll call Jack Adams today. The rest of you will follow suit. And gentlemen, our problems will be over. Now, which one of you cheapskates is going to buy me supper at the best French restaurant in Montreal, eh? Good morning. Good morning. I have a 9.15 appointment with Mr. Campbell. Your name, please? Milton Mount. Yes, Mr. Mand. Have a seat, please. You sniveling communist son of a bitch! They're trying to make the leaves wear blue, not red. You'll be playing elsewhere from now on. from New York for this meeting. 
Pardon me. I flew in from New York for this meeting. I'll bless him again. Something's up. You guys are scared, Ted. Is this the guys talking to you, Gordy? Well, maybe we should pull back. Pull back? We haven't even done anything yet. Gordy, you still in? Are you in, Gord? Yeah. I'm in. Oh! Meet me down there. Meet me down there. What's going on with Glenn and Martin? Mr. Mound, I'm sorry. Mr. Campbell has left for the day. I've come to the most difficult decision of my career. Today, I traded Ted Lindsay and Glenn Hall to the Chicago Blackhawks. What? 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 Oh, Jack, Jack. Uh, was this right. Hall's our future in the goal. Lindsay, he's having his best season. You dumped Lindsay because of that association. No, didn't you? no, no, no way. No, I am strictly a hockey man. I know that uh, Ted's numbers look good, but that's really a tribute to uh, Gordy because you know. Uh, Big fella's been carrying him all year, to be honest with you guys. Come on, Jack, you can't say I made the move for the good of my team. Thank you. Your team now, Gordy. You take care of it. 